Alright, so like I said last time, we're going to move on to Onimusha 3, the game that ends the original trilogy of the series. Apparently the team behind this game were also responsible for the first Onimusha. Worried about how poorly the second game sold in North America and Europe, the team decided to try and get a bit more of a western appeal for this title. Also, when looking up some info on this game, supposedly the CG opening took two years to put together, which is kind of insane. But then again, that CG opening is really badass and engaging, and it's definitely worth watching if you haven't already seen it. The story starts off with a return of Somonosuke, who is ready to finally put an end to Nobunaga Oda. During their fight, however, Somonosuke is pulled into a time warp thing that takes him to Paris in 2004. At the same time, it turns out Oda has managed to send a Genma army to Paris as well, and they've been attacking people there. Here we are introduced to Jox, a French officer who is fighting some Gemma. He too gets pulled into a time warp and sent to Japan a few days before Somonosuke faces Oda. While Jox helps Somonosuke in taking on Oda in Japan, the future Somonosuke has to rid Paris of the Genma. Honestly, I find the story pretty simple and easy to follow. What helps is that this is also just a fun, action-filled adventure that I highly enjoyed. We get some cool Genma, Guildstern returns, Somonosuke and Jox make for a great leads. Jox is a bit of a stubborn but reliable person who you can tell is a caring single father as he tends to think of his son first, which I quite liked, even if I found his son to be annoying at times. Michelle, another respected officer, is Jacques' fiance and is someone I also really enjoyed as she cares for Jacques, works with Somonosuke in reading the Genma, and tries to form a better relationship between her and Jacques' son. And of course, I love Somonosuke as now he's just a Genma-killing badass who is ready to rid the world of Oda. It's so great. So yeah, I had a really fun time with this game story. Oh, and Ranmaru sucks, and he's just an annoying little brown noser. I hate him in this series too. Much like the previous two games, Onimusha is an action-adventure style game where you must slay Genma, solve some puzzles, earn new weapons, and upgrade your gear with the use of souls. However, there are a few things this game does differently as well. First off, movement. Now, tank controls are optional, as you can choose to play that way instead. But the game also offers free analog controls, and while I don't hate tank controls, I must admit the analog control is my preferred way to play since movement feels much more natural and it just makes more sense to me. You will also be playing as both Somonosuke or Jacques from time to time, as well as this game being much more linear in comparison to two. Combat feels pretty nice, and aside from weapons, there are a couple of other differences between our two leads. Somonosuke can use bows to hit flying or long distance enemies, and he has access to bows at all times. It's really quick and convenient, just a little, little time to get used to is all, but once you get the hang of it, it's super simple. While Jacques can grab and throw opponents. While this game is linear, you have a few interesting sections that will require you to observe your surroundings in order to figure out how to move forward like freeing these flying objects that Jacques can use to swing or pull himself over large gaps. Personally, my favorite locations are areas where Jacques and Somonosuke are in the same place at different times and need to trade items to each other via these warp points to get through the dungeon. It's a neat idea and you're rewarded for remembering something odd in the past, like strong boxes, and taking advantage of that in the future, like those boxes being breakable now. These are definitely the areas where puzzles get more challenging, but never impossible or overly complicated. Like the second game, you use red soul to upgrade your weapons, armor, and now your gauntlet, yellow souls will recover health, blue souls restore magic, and purple souls fill up your Onimusha gauge. This time around, now you have control of when you transform into the Onimusha, which is basically an invincible state that powers your characters up greatly. It's fantastic fantastic to use against bosses. Somonosuke gets new weapons like dual blades and a longsword, though I actually like Jacques' weapons more, since they have better reach and just look much cooler to me, like a whip sword and a breakable spear. Plus, they are great for killing those annoying floating orb enemies, thank god. Weapons, of course, each have a magic attack, and thankfully with some of them, if you miss using the magic attack, it won't consume the magic. 
Thank you! I don't remember this being in the previous two games, but by pressing L2, you can pull up a map of your location, which can be helpful for indicating rooms you might not have yet visited. Boss fights this time around are a vast improvement to me over the second game. First off, you often get better view of where you're fighting, and secondly, the bosses are just more interesting and memorable to me. Once again, I think the analog controls really help make this game feel more fluid and feels like I have better control over my character in tough situations, and with boss fights, that definitely feels like a necessity. If you need some help with combat, then you can always do some training at the save points, which is a nice touch. After all, all the things from previous combat is basically there. Charge attacks for Somonosuke, there's of course finishers on the ground, and Jacques has the best one. It's so satisfying. And of course, if you time your attack just right as you're about to be hit by an enemy, you can do that insta-kill strike and chain it with other enemies. It's really, really nice. Lastly, we have Akko, this tango kind of person who is able to time warp between our two leads. With her around, she can open certain chests and pick up items, but her best use is her vest. Throughout the game, you can find these special vests for her to wear, once you unlock their power by giving them these special echo stones, which can be found all throughout the game as well. Some vests will heal you up when you're not moving, increase the amount of red souls enemies will give you, two of which I used a lot, or will help absorb souls faster. Basically, there's bound to be a vest that will complement your playstyle, so keep an eye out for them and go for whatever sounds like it will be the best for you. Now everything is done with 3D models and space, no more pre-rendered backgrounds, which is kind of a shame, but with how detailed the environments and characters look, I can't complain too much. There are nice locations to visit like Notre Dame, a Japanese village, underground ruins, and even a zoo. Like previous Onimusha games, everything looks really good. Once again, Somonosuke is based off of Takashi Keneshiro, while Jacques is played by Jin Ryo. I think that's how you pronounce his name, I'm sorry. I'm not too familiar with him. They even had characters speaking in French at times, which I find to be a nice touch. I wouldn't say I've listened to the OST of this game too much, but I think it has some really strong atmospheric pieces that fit the game's tone very well. Some worthwhile themes that I like would be the main theme, Demon Sword, Courage, Love, and Ambition, to the Origin of Earth, and the best theme, Day of Anger. So yeah, if it isn't obvious yet, but Onimusha 3 is my favorite game in the series. I really, really like this game a lot. It has some fun combat that feels smoother this time around. I enjoy most of the characters and have fun with the game's story. And for me, it's just a great adventure from beginning to end. If you're a fan of the previous Onimusha games, then you should definitely give this one a try. I actually think that it's safe to recommend this game to someone who's just a fan of entertaining actors action games and doesn't mind some puzzle solving dungeons from time to time, and hasn't yet played the other Onimusha games. I think it really stands out on its own very well. There was another Onimusha game after this one, and I played it. Dawn of Dreams was alright, it certainly looked good, but I really wasn't getting into it all that much. It's not at all a bad game, just not one I personally enjoyed as much as the others. Sorry if this video seems short, I'm trying to keep my reviews better focused and short again just because it's easier for me, so hopefully this worked out well for all y'all. Hopefully it was still at least somewhat informative. Anyway, next time we'll be taking a look at a cult classic RPG, so I'll see you all then. Thank you.